Good morning, everybody. Well, we're in the middle of this uh, virus, COVID-19, and a lot of people have been wearing masks. Well, I'm a Texan, and I live out in the rural area, and so a mask would look funny for a guy with a hat, so I've got my bandana on. There we go. There. Now, what do you think of it? Let me just leave it on a second. There you go. Hey, there we are. Yeah. <laughs> I posted that and said this is an interesting way to get money out of the bank. Uh, no, I don't carry a gun because they would know me anyway. So I can't get away with anything. Um, but it's, and now you have to go just into the drive-in. That'd be interesting. You drive the drive-in, they got bulletproof vests. Yeah, right. <laughs> you don't need a mask for that either. You know, in life, we have to make the best of what we're going through. And you know, they have a proverb, if there's all sunshine and no rain, it results in what? A desert. And so there are mountain peak times that we have, and then there's valleys we have. And life is always going between the two. We prefer just the mountaintop, the joy and everything else, but you know what? Life isn't that way. And there's lots of changes along the way. In Psalms 23, verses 1 through 4, we have a great passage for us. The Lord is my shepherd. Now you need to put your name there. The Lord is Debbie's shepherd. The Lord is Cameron's shepherd. The Lord is Jennifer's shepherd. He is your shepherd. I have everything I need. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. What does he do? He restores my soul. Don't we need that, especially right now? He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Put that in your mind. God is with you. Even through the darkest valleys of life, he doesn't abandon you. In Israel, there's actually a canyon called the Valley of the Shadow of Death. Now, it's one of many canyons, especially in the southern part of Israel, of the land of Palestine. And the sides of these valleys are so steep and narrow. They're like 800 feet tall, some of them. And the only time you get sunlight is when it's, the sun's directly overhead. Otherwise, all you have is shadows. You can still see there's light, but it's a lot of shadows. And as we look through this, there's a lot of shadows we have to go through in life. A lot of things we have to overcome. There's a lot of struggles and pain and heartache we deal with. And just like with this virus, yeah, we're, people are getting a little stir crazy. But greater is he that's with us, that's Christ, and he that's in the world, that's evil. So you walk in strength and confidence knowing that God is going to get us through this valley. 2,900 years ago, Israel had a problem because Syria decided to join with a bunch of 32 other nations and go ahead and dispose of Ahab and destroy the nation of Israel. So what did they do? They came and fought. And Israel had a great victory in the mountaintops. And so next year, the Syrians go, well, we got a better plan now. And it's found in 1 Kings chapter 20, verse 23. The Syrian advisors went back to their king and explained, Israel's gods are gods of the hills. The last time we fought them, that was last year, we fought them in the hills. That's why we we're defeated. Yeah, they're figuring it out, right? Hmm. This is their rationale. It's wrong, but it's their rationale. A lot of times we have our rationale. We try to out-thank God and we don't. But if we fight them in the valleys where they are weak, we will defeat them there. So over to verse 27. The Syrian forces covered the entire countryside, but the Israelites looked like two little flocks of goats. So here's the imbalance. Here's the word picture. You've got 100,000 men there ready to fight. You've got 7,000 over here. And it's going to be a slaughter, Right? Wrong. Why? 1 Kings 20, verse 28. 
God says, because the Syrians think I'm only the God of the hills, not and I am the God of the valleys. I'm going to give you the victory over the huge army so everyone will know that I am the Lord. And so what happened? The little 7,000 sadly defeated the larger army. Why? God was with them. And in life, you will have trouble. You will have trials. You'll have tribulations. You'll have bullies around. And you say, there's no way I can win. They're too big. They're mean, too ugly, too hateful. I can never win. Yes, you can. And we're going to look a lot today how God will help you through whatever valley you're going through. Consider um, in Deuteronomy 11, verse 11. Moses was leading the people to the promised land. The promised land you're about to enter has hills and valleys. What does that tell you? There's a lot of mountain peaks there. A lot of joyful things happening. But there's going to be a lot of problems. And that's how valleys are in our life. They're inevitable. They come at unusual time. In fact, valleys generally come with the worst possible time. So don't be surprised and shocked when they come. In fact, the older we get, what happens? We know they're going to come. We know they're going to be unexpected. And so we have steeled ourselves ready for them. So when they come, we don't fall apart. We don't write. We don't complain. We say, what do, what do I need to do? I know I'm going to pray that God's going to do his part, but what part does God want me to play? Because God expects me to act in faith, trusting that he has already taken care of it. Remember that. In 1 Peter 4.12, don't be surprised. I love that. Don't be surprised when you are tested by troubles and painful sufferings as if something unusual is happening to you. He said, what's your problem? These things come at a regular time, and God has equipped you and empowered you as a believer to overcome them. Yes, sometimes they'll make you cry. Sometimes they'll cause you, cost you money. I don't know about you, but I think this virus is costing everybody a lot of money. But things like this happen in life. And they don't break us, they actually make us stronger because we see God's power working through us more than any other time that's when we're in a difficult time. And we're there. So the problems in life, get this, is not because God's mad at you, it's because you're human. It's not because you're a bad person, it's life happens to everyone. And we will journey through this together. Now, Valleys, get this, happen to everyone. And so, you're not excluded. Now, there's a way you can avoid them, but it's not going to happen. They're simply inevitable. Good things happen to bad people, and bad things happen to good people, and vice versa. Good people get blessed, and bad people get bad stuff at times. And sometimes it flops back the other way. In Psalms 34, 19, the good man does not escape all trouble. Boy, that's true. He has them too, but the Lord helps him in each and every one. See, the good godly man knows that, yeah, I'm, I'm in a trouble, I'm in a trial situation, but God is helping me through this trial. I will come out of it. You know, I got problems, you have problems, it's just life. But sometimes people go, well, I've got a problem because God is punishing me. You haven't read your Bible. For a believer, God doesn't punish, God disciplines. Discipline is corrective to set you on the right path. God doesn't hate you, he loves you, so therefore he disciplines us to make us better. Do you realize nobody's immune from these valleys? We, we're not insulated. Uh, nobody's isolated. We all run into sorrow at times. That's just part of life. In Matthew 5, 45, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. Everyone goes through the exact same things in life. It happens. So, valleys are what? Totally unpredictable. Get that down in your heart. Valleys in life are totally unpredictable. 
And that's part of the big problem, since if we could predict and know when they're coming, we can get ready. But they're not predictable. And they always come at the worst time. Do you realize you get a bad valley when? when the, not the good time for you to have it, but the worst time. You know, if we could schedule our problems, you know, okay, I, my calendar's clear next week. Okay, I can, I can handle some problems, but no problems next week. No, they show up at the worst possible time, and they're uglier and meaner than you ever wanted them to be. And you say, well, I don't want that to happen. I'll pray to God that I won't get any values. <laughs> God will smile and laugh because it's just part of life that are inevitable. And uh, Proverbs 27, verse 1. Don't brag about tomorrow since you don't know what the day will bring forth. You don't know. Here's the thing for the believers. God allows the values. He allows the heartache. He allows the pain to make us stronger. He won't allow us to overcome more than we can bear, but he allows us to be stronger. And so he allows these valleys to build us up so we can take on greater tasks and honor him. So what kind of valleys should we expect in life? Well, I can give you a few from the scripture, but there's many more. This is just a short list. First, I've got the valley of Siddim. You say, I haven't heard of the Valley of Siddim. Well, you need to read the Bible. It's in Genesis chapter 14. You have the Valley of Siddim. You say, what was that about? Well, there were, it was a battle of nine armies. Five of those were within Israel, in the Palestine area. The other four were from outside. Here's the problem. The four from the outside were more numerous stronger, more powerful. And for 12 years, they were telling the five inside there, uh, we won't come and enslave you as long as you pay us in taxes. But if you don't get pay your taxes, we're not going to be happy with you, and we just come and give you a hard time. So the five inside finally decided, we're not paying any more taxes. And they said, fine, we'll, come, we'll see you very soon. And they do. And what happens? The ones that said, not, we're not paying taxes, well, two of them decided they didn't want to fight for their freedom. They didn't want to fight for their family. They didn't want to take on the enemy. They just ran away. Consider. In Genesis 14, verse 10, this valley was full of sticky tar pits. And when they, that's the two kings that tried to run away, tried to run away from the battle, they slipped and fell in the pits. So never run away from a fight. Never run away from a battle. You put on the full armor of God and then you stand firm and let God fight your battle. But they turned and ran. You always lose when you turn and run. In verse 11, so the invaders plundered the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and they took everything they had. They also captured Abraham's nephew Lot who was living in Sodom. So Valley of Siddim. When you run away, what happens? You slip and fall, and you get defeated. Don't run away. Stand firm. Walk through that valley. So the va this is the Valley of Siddim is the Valley of Failure. And it's where you slip, fall, and get stuck. And so you don't want to slip, fall, and get stuck. You want to be standing firm and overcome what you comes your way. Just know there are failures in life. And if you try to run from them, you'll fail. Be strong and walk through them. Because God is with you. Remember this. It's not about your strength, your abilities. It's about our Heavenly Father. So if you look to Him for your strength, Him for your ability, Him for your help, what happens? You, it's not about you anymore. It's about Him. So you don't look at yourself, you look at him, and you can overcome them. Question, what system are you walking through right now this time of failure? Do you have an addiction you're dealing with? Or are you feeling prison? Or if there's a relationship you need to end, and you know you need to end it for some time, but you're trying to fight through that? No, deal with it. What about an addiction? 
Maybe you feel like I'm just kind of stuck in a rut where I'm at. Break free from it with God's power. Sin is a place where you, won't, you don't want to remember anymore. You want to forget it. Leave it behind. When you stand for something, be strong. Don't become a failure. Now next we have the Valley of Eskel. You say, well, where is the Valley of Eskel? It's over there in the Promised Land. In Numbers 13, 23 through 33. What do we have? We have Moses has led the nation of Israel out of Egypt's bondage. For over 400 years, they were in bondage. Now he's led them free. But now, it's only a three days journey from Israel over to Egypt, or Egypt from Israel. So either way you go, it's about three days walk. You can do that today, if you can get through all the checkpoints. Here's the problem. They've been walking around in the desert for a year. You say, why? It's a three day walk. Because God keeps on giving them tests and they keep on failing the tests. So finally they come to the promised land. Moses said, points 12 spies. Now the only two to remember are Joshua and Caleb. The other 10 were failures, so they didn't worry about them. And so they go in and check out the land. Where Caleb and Joshua come back and say, man, it's great. We need to go in right now. The other 10 come back and says, Hmm. We'd rather go back to slavery than go and fight this battle. And go, what? You've been freed from bondage from Egypt. You're no longer a slave, but you won't fight for your freedom. You won't take on the battle and overcome what you're dealing with. That's what 10 of them said. They'd rather remain in bondage than fight for the freedom. Staggering to think. So what happened? For the next 40 years, they walked around in the desert. Every male, every adult at that time died in the wilderness, never entered the promised land except for two, Joshua and Caleb, because they trusted God. So, in the valley of, oh, let me get you this verse. In the valley of Eskel, the valley of fear, I move ahead or give up. Did you get that? I move ahead or give up. Let, let's come go back to the verse a second. I got to preaching long, we got to read my verse here. Numbers 13, verse 33. The ten other spies said, in our own eyes we felt as small as grasshoppers next to them. What? They had an inferiority complex. They said, we're not big enough. We're not strong enough. We can't do it. Oh, woe's me. But Caleb and Joshua said, yes, we can. And so that's why the valley of Eskel is the valley of fear. I either move ahead or give up. Please never give up. Move ahead. Never quit. Never say, cower down. Be strong and get through this. You know, these guys were parked in Sinai for a year. And they still wouldn't go in. And so they died in the wilderness rather than having the blessings of God. Here's the thing. When you come upon something, it can be an obstacle or an opportunity. The choice is yours. You can say, oh, this obstacle is so big, I can't handle it. Oh, woe's me. Or you can come to God. Now, God, we've got an opportunity. How, do we go through this opportunity? Do we go over it? Do we go around it? Do we dig a hole and come up the other side? How do we do it, God? It's amazing. We'll come up with some ideas. But when you put on the full arm of God and trust God and stand firm, God will give you ways you never thought possible to overcome it. In fact, many times, God just moves it out of the way. He just takes care of it. You know, what happened to that big opportunity that other people called an obstacle? God delivered you, and he will. Now we have the Valley of Elah. See, you, may, you may not realize it, but you know about the Valley of Elah. It's very well known because a young man named David met a big, ugly, awful critter named Goliath. 
in 1 Samuel 17, verse 2 through 4 and 11. Saul and the Israelites camped in the valley of Elah, and they drew the battle plan to fight the Philistines. The Philistines and the Israelites stood their grounds, shouting, taunting each other from opposite the hills, with the valley of Elah between them. So here you have Israel over here, the Philistines over here, and they're shouting at one another, and there's the valley between them. Nobody's going in the valley yet until finally somebody does. Now, the Philistine army had a giant champion fighter. The giant champion fighter was named Goliath, who was nine feet tall. When Saul and the Israelites saw this, they were terrified and deeply shaken. Notice. Here you have these men of war. They prepared for battle, but they see this big guy and go, I'm not fighting him. And then you have a young man who's a shepherd. Walks in and says, that guy, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. I'm going to go get him. And he did. They tried to load him down with the typical armor of the day and the sword. He said, I get, I, this doesn't suit me. I doesn't feel right. And he just went out with a few stones and took care of his Goliath. What do you need to do to take care of your Goliath? Yes, Goliath is mean, ugly. He doesn't fight fair. He's awful, dreadful, but God is greater than any Goliath you ever have. He will take them all. I love this. 1 Samuel 17, 32. Don't worry about a thing, David told him, Saul. I'll go and fight this Philistine. Now just remember, he's the same guy that says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. David knew it. David believed it. David put it into action and dealt with Goliath. And uh, 17 verse 3. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites the other and the valley of Elam was between them. There you have everybody watching. Here comes David. What happens? Goliath falls and deals with it. And it's interesting if you read the passage. He defeats Goliath, and then he takes Goliath's own sword and cuts his head off. You say, what's the point? Don't let them get back up and destroy you. You deal with them, and you move on. You don't allow the Goliaths in your life to say, oh, it's okay. Come back in. Uh, you know, I hurt you, but yeah, everything's okay. You were mean to me, but it's okay. No, it's not. No, it's not. Deal with your Goliaths. Get them out and you move on. Don't come back across that path again. So the Valley of Elah is a valley of conflict. When we're facing what? A giant challenge. And every one of us at times have had a giant challenge. You go, what, how do I deal with this problem? How do I overcome it? Goliath is a giant conflict. You know, you may be walking through the Valley of Shadow of Death. That's the biggest giant conflict. Or you may have one of the others. Nasidim or Esco, you know, where there's difficult times, where there's awful periods, where you've got a giant you're dealing with. All these things happen. God will get you through it, and you'll be stronger. Now we have the Valley of Baca. It's in Psalms 84. It's a much different valley. Baca means, literally from the Hebrew, weep. To weep. It's dry, it's dusty, it's arid. Nothing grows there, nothing's good there. The only water that winds up there is the tears of people that are walking through it. You say, well, then why would anybody go through there? Well, if you wanted to go from Galilee down to Jerusalem for the various feasts, you had to go through the Valley of Baca. And so it was someplace everybody had to go and nobody wanted to go, but we got to go through it. And so people did. In Psalms 84, verse 5, Blessed are those whose strength comes from the Lord as they pass through the valley of Baca. I'm going to point this out. Through the valley. You don't stay in the valley of weeping. You walk through the valley. They make it a place of springs. They make it a place of springs and autumn rains covered with pools. They go through from strength to strength, growing until each appears before the God in Zion. So it's dry, it's arid, 
You feel no energy. You feel broken. You're grieving. You're weeping. But you're going through it. And the thing is, God is with you going through this valley of weeping, the time of tears. And what about the springs? In Psalms 84, verse 5 and 6, notice this. Blessed are those whose strength comes to the Lord as they pass through the valley of Baca that's weeping. They make it a place of springs. How does it become a place of springs? Your tears. You cry, you weep, you mourn as you go through this valley. But you go through it. You don't camp out in this valley. It's not a place to stay. So the it, Valley of Baca is a valley of grief and barrenness. Grief and barrenness. It's not a productive place. Although in life, you have to take your times of grieving. And then you move on to your next step. If you pass up your grief, it actually could wind up in depression, which is not good. Because these times are inevitable, they're impartial, they happen to everybody. We all wind up grieving at times, they're unpredictable, and we go through them. So we've had value of failure, fear, conflict, dryness, grief, value of trouble, and we go through them. And remember, the enemy doesn't fight fair. Now, now, when you're fighting the enemy, you think, well, a fair fight. Now, the enemy will do anything to win. Just know that. And they want to pin you down and force you to do their will. You have to be victorious and rise over it. Do not let them destroy you. And remember, they lie. The enemy lies and lies and lies and tries to think, make you think you don't have any hope. With God, you have all the hope in the world because your Savior loves you. And the same power that raised Christ from the dead is within you. Remember that. He is within you and will empower you to overcome things. So what to remember when you're in a battle? Remember, I am not alone. God is with me. God is with me. You'll have friends who will stand beside you. You'll have friends that you thought were friends and desert you. But God is the most important one who is with you. He will not abandon you. He will strengthen you and give you power you never thought you could have. Now the valley of the shadow of death, the Hebrew word is salwalt. So it's an unusual word. And as we look at that, it's we all face this valley. The human race and mortality race 100%. So we will face death. And Psalms 23, verse 4. Even when you walk through the valley of shadow of death, that's the Shalom, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. So the valley is temporary. You go through it. Circle the word shadow in the scripture. The shadow of death. Friends, sooner or later, your death is going to cross your path. I've lost my mother, my father, Grandparents on both sides. I've lost my aunt and my uncle, Aunt Joanne Smith and uh, Alton, and also Harold, who she was also married to, uncle. And I still have uh, my uncle Rod Brand and my aunt Marjorie on my father's side. They're the last of that generation of direct descendants in my family. After they're gone, then I'm the next generation. As a pastor, I've lost many friends. My dear friend Ken Evans passed away this past week. His funeral was held this past Wednesday. It's, it's part of life. I was very encouraged how his family, uh, they were gathered with their mask on up in Wyoming, and many participated by reading scriptures, and the pastor who I met when he came down to MD Anderson, super guy, he's been their pastor up in Sheridan a long time, great guy. I was very pleased how the service went. So later, host one down here. But what's hard for a pastor is I've been by the bedside of many people who've passed away. But one thing I remember, every time I'm by, beside a believer who's near death, I've never seen anything but peace. They're typically not, they're crying, they're, they're fine, they're prepared. Who's doing the crying, the weeping? It's those of us left behind. They as they're preparing to meet their Savior, knowing they're meeting their Savior, and it's okay, they're ready. 
We're the ones who are never prepared to let them go. Psalms 43, 2. Write this verse down so you'll remember it. You need to remember this verse. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. There are troubles. There are deep problems. But God will go with you. Now, notice how he illustrates it for us. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. He says, you will feel at times the water's right there at the top of your mouth and you're about ready to drown. He says, you're not going to drown. I'm going to be with there for you and stand with you. Notice further. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you realize we all have people that try to oppress us. You will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Keep walking through the oppression. Keep walking through the fire and get to the other side. It's going to be incredible once you get through because God's with you through those times. And I, I don't know what valley you're going through. And as I said, we all tend to be going through a valley at some point. And most of us are in a valley right now. Now, I will say this. You're either in a valley you're coming out of valley, or you're getting ready to come back in one. So it's just a circle around. Just know that. Let me give you another verse. Psalm 73, 28. Write this down. Psalm 73, 28. As for me, God's presence is all I need. I made the sovereign Lord my shelter. Make God your shelter. Trust him with all of your heart. Because we need the shelter from the oppression. We need the shelter from the anger. We need the shelter from the hatred. We need the shelter from the fights of life. And God is our shelter, and he'll bring us through. Now further, now remember, if you don't get anything else, God's presence is all you need. His presence. Remember, I am not alone. Put that in your mind. I am not alone. God's presence is all I need. And as a believer, he is in you. The Holy Spirit comes within you the moment you accept Christ as your Savior. The same power raised Christ from the dead is available to you. He is with you. He will not leave you alone. Now remember, God has a purpose for this valley. And every valley you go through, there's a purpose behind it. He doesn't allow these valleys without a purpose. There's a reason for every valley we go through. Remember Psalms 23. It shows everything there and how we're protected and loved and watched over. Now, it's impossible, get this, for God to do evil. He, can, he can't do evil. He can only do good. So just know that. So God has big plans for your life. Sees his plans. Don't think, well, God has plans for other people, but not little old me. You're not listening to God. God has plans for every single person. Seize the moment. In Romans 5, verse 3 through 5, we can even rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces what? Endurance. And endurance produces character, and character produces hope. That kind of hope that does not disappoint us because God poured out his love into our hearts. That's why we have hope. God is pouring out his love for us. So even though we're going through suffering, we're going through heartache, God's love is being poured in us to give us the strength to get through this time. Stephen Curtis Chapman wrote a book recently, Between Heaven and the Real World. What you may not know, he lost his little girl. She passed away. And his, he and his wife were absolutely devastated. He wrote this in his interview. Jesus tells us in the world, you will have trouble, he said, but take heart because I've overcome the world. Of course, he was quoting John 16, 33. Jesus told us we will have tribulation, we will have problems, but he's overcome the world. Believe that. Now further, he said this, Stephen Curtis Chapman, if I didn't believe that, I'd be extremely bitter and angry man. Why, of course, his daughter passed away, and it broke he and his wife. My little girl's death underlined and solidified what I knew, and I believed, but it made me made it more real in my life. When there's nothing else to hold on to, 
I heard myself say, I'm going to trust you, God, and worship you, not because there's an audience out there. I'm going to do that because I'm going to bless your name for you, what you give, you give. What you take away, you give, you take away. And I trust in you alone. That is faith. So the valley of trouble, that's the valley of Achor. We'll go through it. It's mentioned twice in Joshua and also Hosea. See, the valley of Achor is valley of trouble. God says this in Hosea 2.15, I will transform the valley of trouble into a gateway of hope. Now, if you think you're going through a time of trouble, God says, I'm going to open that so it's a gateway, an opening of hope for you. So you break through that trouble and you come to the gateway of hope. In Colossians 1.11, God will strengthen you with his own great power so that you will not give up. Underline that, so you won't give up. So you will not give up when trouble comes, but you will be patient. You will be patient. That's Colossians 1.11. He's not just going to give you his presence. He's going to give you his power. Consider this. Let me read this. I wrote this out. I want to make this right. You're going to be rewarded for being a faithful to Christ in the valley of failure, in the valley of fear, in the valley of conflict, in the valley of grief, in the valley of brokenness. We all get broken at times. In the valley of trouble, we all face trouble. And all the other valleys that are in Scripture, why? Because God is with us to get us through these valleys. And God sends people along to help us through these valleys. Take heart. There are people that love you and care for you. In 2 Corinthians 4.17, for our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Isn't that comforting? You know, when you're in a valley, you think, this will never end. God says, no, they're small and they won't last very long. Take heart. Yet they are producing in us an eternal glory that will last forever. And it's greater than anything we can imagine. God's grace, God's peace, God's strength through a valley will last forever. And the strength you gain will last forever because you'll be in heaven. You know, sometimes we go, you know, when you get to heaven, you can look around and go, why did I cry? Why did I worry? Why did I complain? Look how wonderful this is. It was all worth what I went through. Look where God is placing me. I know sometimes you're going through a dark valley, and you say, there's just no hope. There is hope, because God's there to help you through that valley. Now, Remember, the Lord is our shepherd. There's a problem. The Lord is only your shepherd if you ask him to be your shepherd. And if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, repent of your sins. So you need to do that today. Pray right now. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I repent of my sins. I want him to be my shepherd, my Lord, and my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Do that. Make sure you send me an email saying to emaxbrand at gmail.com. I want to hear from you. You need to know Christ is your Savior. I need, we'll give you help. We'll need to give you encouragement. Now, for your, you as believers, many of you have been going through trials and tribulations, especially with this virus going on. I want you to know God knows. God cares. God loves you. Share his love for us. Uh, to others. For his love flows in you, let it flow out to others and share that so that others will know that you're his disciples. And you know, when you let God be your shepherd, you can take your hands off that wheel and let him guide your life. And it'll be the most pleasant journey you'll ever went on. I thank God for the valleys. Because if it wasn't for the valleys, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't be strong as I am today. And I wouldn't have to accomplish what I have. It's because of God's help. And that goes for every single one of us. The only valleys that come into your life are the ones he allows. And here's the problem. If you fail the test, he'll give it to you over again. So you don't want that test over again. Never give up and overcome that. Let's take a moment and pray. 
Lord Jesus, we thank you for your wonderful love. And this time we draw near to you. We thank you for your great shepherding of us. How you're leading us through this valley of this coronavirus 19. COVID-19. And we're going to get through this together because we love you and you love us. And you will walk with us and sometimes you'll carry us through this dark time. And the other valleys we're all facing as well. Financial, relational, and life. Help us to get through these that we'll honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.